Namaste. Today we are with Gautam ji once again for a special podcast recording. Uh, Gautam, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Nick. My pleasure. Uh, Gautam, today I wanted to speak to you about a very important and simple topic, but very important. On how does a devotee know what is Baba's will in any particular situation? How does one truly come to know what Baba wants or to happen or Baba's will? Could you speak a little bit about this and give us some pointers? Sure. Uh, Nick, you might be aware of even specific references which Baba has uh, mentioned in the texts. But you see, ultimately Baba represents the source. You see, you could call it the source, you could call it consciousness, you could call it the divine, you could give it any name, right? So, he represents the source. So, in our life, whatever happens is his will. Now, the main point here is whatever happens, whether it is perceived as good or bad, that is the main point. What happens is, we think that only good can happen to us as per Baba's will. He never said that. He has clearly stated that you will have to go through your prarabdh. But I am there to mitigate the effect and to provide you strength to go through it. So there is this misconceived notion that Baba would not want anything bad to happen to me. Because who else is there besides Baba? Who else is there besides the source? You cannot split the source into good and bad and say that the source only represents good because you are looking at it as an individual. Good happening to me as an individual. You see, that is the common mistake on the spiritual journey. Life is not all about pleasures. We all have seen that in fact we have more, that, more pains than pleasures in our lives. That's our life's experience. So, when we say everything is Baba's will, what it means is everything is the will of God, whether you like it or not. That must be understood by the sincere devotees of Sai Baba. You yourself have interviewed such luminaries on your channel who have been through tremendous hardships. Like I, for example, or take Meena Kapoor as another example. You see, so their thinking was not that none of this would have happened if it was Baba's will. In fact, they are even more ardent devotees of Baba. You see, so this is actually a very important topic you have raised because yes. there is a lot of delusion around this topic. How can Baba take my job away from me? How can Baba take this relationship away from me? I have received mails like that too. It is not Baba doing that. It is one's prarabd karma. We have come here to square off our accounts. And in times like this, that is when one's faith is needed in Baba. Instead of questioning, Baba, how can this be your will? It, of course, it is His will. You see? Uh, I'd like to add another point here. How to know, as you rightly asked, when is it Baba's will and when is it not? You can rest assured when things are not going as per your will, it is Baba's will. This is another way to look at it. Because you have a limited perspective. Your wants and desires and needs are based on what you think they should be. And when the universe does not provide them, it means there is a higher will operating, which is not your will. Can we take this with an example, Gautam, just to simplify it a little bit? Sure, we can take various examples. Let's take a very simple example of a boy wanting a girl in his life. And he tries everything possible to woo her, but she is not interested, right? Now, he could say that, oh, my will is to get this girl and Baba is not helping me. Because he is seeing it from his perspective. But when he, in spite of his individual will and effort, is not getting what he desires, at that time he needs to accept this as the will of Baba because for all you know he has been spared a bad relationship. 
correct to trust that whatever is happening is happening for his best exactly. he may not know it absolutely now gautam it takes me to another important point that in any circumstance and situation if a devotee develops this deep faith that regardless of what happens on in my prarabdha on the outside my love and devotion and commitment to baba is steadfast it is not dependent on my life circumstance otherwise one is going to have a very uh, uh, a relationship with baba which is conditional so could you speak a little bit about that aspect as well this is the ultimate journey of uh, the journey of the guru disciple relationship depends on the faith the disciple has in the guru no matter what happens in his or her life that is the true faith because it is that faith which can take you through some extreme situations which you would in any case have to face but without having a guru you may not be able to face that you may break down you may go under but with faith in the guru the guru being the representation of the absolute which sai baba was the highest guru that faith in the absolute is what will see you through the darkest times and that is like we started by saying karma has to be lived we have to go through it but to keep ourselves afloat despite what life brings to us that is the role of the guru that is what baba says he will do you see so it is not a bed of roses that you will get the job of your dreams you will marry the girl of your dreams you will have a large bank account you will go through the corona uh, corona crisis with no negative effects on you why because baba is your guru he never said that so let's get let's get real let's see what is baba baba represents consciousness consciousness is all there is including opposites of every conceivable kind good and bad black and white up and down left and right pleasure and pain pleasure and pain are the two polaric opposites which we all face in life what nisargadatta maharaj had said was between the banks of pleasure and pain one's life flows that is the nature of life but what individuals do is they try to just st- sit on one bank it is not possible because a river has to a river flowing will have two banks the banks of pleasure and pain so we create suffering for ourselves when we do not acknowledge and accept that the pain in our, in our lives is also part of our destiny and part of the will of the divine god never said that you know i will only give you a life of pleasure gotham you know the problem with this is it doesn't sit well with certain people when they cannot even conceive that the will of the divine is pain why don't we just rephrase it to that the way manifestation works things do break down as eckhart would say the way uh you know the instruments of consciousness function it is designed to break and things don't work out so you know that is why the masters tell you to go through the things so you get out of the birth and death cycle which baba would tell you that you i will give you what you want till you want what i want to give you so amidst all of this chaos and till your prarab this cut out baba is pointing you in that direction inward to that space of freedom so you are free of this game which many do not uh, focus on then yes but uh, nick unfortunately what they don't realize is that they are prolonging their own suffering by making this demand from baba that no baba cannot give me pain because you are you are living in an illusion because reality is very different so why not wake up to that illusion understand that this is the dynamic of life and be at peace with it rather than avoid it because when you avoid it you are creating suffering for yourself and also gotham when one is in a challenging situation to face it 
it with saburi with trust and not say have the attitude you know in hindi there's that term jhelna padta hai to have a smiling approach and have that patience that this too will pass and that trust yes so most important here is what does the role of the guru play in this and we can go by an example let's use uh, use this lockdown example where people are worried about their jobs the first step is that you accept this happened because it happened otherwise it would not have happened so your mind is not full of why did this happen to me oh my god this should not have happened to me i have done so many good things in my life all that dialogue is finished because you have accepted the will of the divine which i would make bold to say let's say you have accepted the will of the lord the absolute of baba this is the situation before you the point is you have not overlaid it with psychological suffering now next step let's say you are concerned about your job you are employed in an organization now questions come up will i lose my job how long will this go on for will my employers give me a salary cut these are all valid concerns which of these happen time will tell right now the devotee of baba the absolute staunch devotee even in him concern will arise because it's natural but what will happen is there will be no blame there will be no condemnation that i am condemned to this situation there will be no condemnation against the virus also there will be no condemnation against the employers also he will accept that this happened because it was destined to happen and rather than rely on my will my puny little will i will rely on the shoulders of my guru and his will to take me through this crisis so that concern which is a valid concern will not get translated into foreboding and depression and angst and undue worry which spills over and makes not only our lives miserable but the people we are living with their lives miserable a staunch devotee of baba will not let that happen because his faith will create that cushion that is the difference you know gautam this gives me an example of what one discourse of osho i had heard heard many years ago and he gave the example of a devotee who was obviously very advanced this devotee uh, went through absolute hunger and his prayer of gratitude to god was this that god thank you for my hunger this was my need and you satisfied it and osho went to the extent to say with this attitude of the devotee he is truly free yes that's beautiful and uh, it was a very beautiful and deep pointer that this can is one of the most extreme circumstances and saying baba this was my need thank you whether it is a loss what lessons are hidden in it we do not know and it would also take me to uh, one other thing where you know many people talk of free will and their will but i feel personally gautam if you have absolute trust in your guru and baba and he knows what is best for you what uh, what is the value of having any free will or choice when you totally surrender to baba absolutely because what happens is it's the will of the divine of baba which starts operating in your life so what what will happen in practical terms is you will stop trying to control outcomes like you used to because already your own life has shown you such little is in your control you intend one thing and something else happens you work for something you may or may not get the rewards that is your own life's experience at the same time you know that your breathing happens without you doing anything your heart pumps without you having to do anything so many things happen without any control being exercised by you so that little control that you thought you had you over life when you hand that also over to the higher will then you know that whatever is meant to happen is going to happen for the best so you stop interfering in the will of the divine because you know you you have certain things in mind so strongly that your vision becomes tunnel vision you lose the bigger picture and we do that even for others we know what's best for them that's what we think 
that's the narrowness of our vision and our will to control so it is giving up this controlling device because control is based on fear you know we fear certain outcomes so we try to control things obsessively so when we allow things you know when we hand the reins of our life to baba this is what starts happening naturally you accept situations easier and it makes your life simpler you will still do what you have to do like i said the concerns will arise the working mind will step in and figure out outcomes which are better which are not what should i do that is the functioning of life but all the rubbish which is heaped over it there will be no room for that any gautam uh, can i ask you if we can run past a few more practical examples for example if someone has decisions to take in a practical way uh, if they find resistance in it in general they can take it as a given that this is not baba's will because i believe maharaj had once said nisargadatta maharaj that what comes unasked is meant for you correct so there is a lot to take away from that uh, line absolutely because the sheer fact that it has come unasked means your will was not there not at all for example you never know what the next moment brings it could be pleasure or pain so that is also coming unasked but what we try to do is we try to guarantee that all the next moments of our lives will only bring us pleasures it is impossible you know then also gotham for example sometimes there is that phrase the boat going uphill there are circumstances in life where one may find themselves in a situation where they feel they are acting in a way where they are trying to push the boat uphill then that is also a clear sign you are going against the flow of life and baba's will yes because you know this is a very delicate point because what happens is there are two ways to look at it one is that we tend to keep exercising effort in a direction while the universe is constantly showing us that it's yielding no result you know so how much of your effort based on your volition and doership are you going to keep exercising and that is why even in some ancient spiritual courses it is said that whatever happens in your life with not either too much effort or with least resistance is what is meant for you because then that you know has come by the will of the divine You see, there was also a, a, a gyani uh, from Gujarat. I have forgotten his name. He was also referred to as Maharaj, and someone had asked him about striving for money and working hard, and he said, "Look, if you are designed to do that, you will. That does not mean you will get it, because whether you get it or not has already been decided according to your prarabdha, and therefore, at a certain point, when that is." to come to you it will sprout from your own astral body and produce the wealth because he had seen the mechanics of it but now does this mean you sit back and do nothing it does not mean that it means you do what you are naturally inclined to if you are naturally inclined to work hard by all means work hard knowing that the money coming in is not in your control that is the message of the gita you see so one has to live like that live according to one's nature a timid person if someone tells the timid person that you know don't be timid it's a cruel world you have to be strong when it's not in his or her nature to be strong they are creating suffering for themselves but to accept that my nature is timid because god made me that way so when fear arises arises let it arise i'll witness the fear but it is so much easier to accept one's god given attributes rather than create this instead of this this huge thing of what should i be versus what i am that is where the suffering lies unfortunately in this world gotham extroversion is encouraged and many introverts are forced to fit in against their strength so in that sense also Uh, many things from a perspective of society are imposed true very true mm. that is true but Gotham? yet mm. yeah, mm. but yet 
despite that if one is comfortable with one's innate nature one will lead a life relatively peaceful than if one struggles to go against the innate nature uh gautam one other example i wanted to cite was of baba's param bhakta kaka sahib dikshit after baba left his body kaka would have questions sometimes then he would lay two chits and it was a yes and no and he had absolute faith absolute that whatever baba willed would come in that chit so if some devotees have questions they could try that but then they have to have that absolute faith that kaka had because even here i can see very easily someone may make up their mind they want to do something they will lay a chit three times then that is cheating yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true it yeah. also happens in tarot card readings you know if you're not happy with the first reading you tell the tarot reader to deal the deck again because again you want an a particular outcome this is a very good example to show the workings of the mind and this personal will it is already made up its mind it should be like this yeah exactly so there's this assumption that that will be good for me yes now if you look at kaka sahib's example he used it as a tool when let's say he was not decided so he needed a yes or no he had full faith in the guru and he took the answer of yes or no to be the guru's word because he was confused it was used merely as a tool now whether it was yes he followed it whether it was no he followed it he was not invested in the outcome that i want to yes yes this is why i like this example because it shows the working of the mind correct that if one's tendency already is that and you know there's also this tendency when say you converse with a friend you want matching opinions so yeah. you will talk to five people and someone gives you the balm saying yes yes this is good for you so these are just tendencies of the mind one can become aware of you know i use this common example let's say you've seen a movie which you love and you go and tell you you meet a social gathering you meet some friends and you say hey guys have you seen this movie I, you know i loved it and someone else says oh i didn't like it at all now are you willing to accept that that person's point of view is as valid as yours or are you going to convince him how can you think like that how can you say that it's such a good movie most of us do that when we are given an opposing view we think the other person is wrong and then we try to rectify their point of view and this was baba's one of baba's primary teachings that do not get into confrontation which is easily forgotten by many yes because you forget that the other opinion is also an opinion from the divine itself you are not the only one you see this it reminds <laughs> me of the story of the mahut and the elephant where the guru told uh, the disciple uh, something and this man was sitting in a forest and uh, he said i don't know this elephant came running and uh, the the mahut was telling him get out of the way get out of the way but based on what he had heard from his guru that everything uh, is god's will i don't know what he said no no i'll just sit here and then the elephant ran over him and his guru shouted at him the next day he said even the mahut is god yes, so when exactly. mahut the mahut was shouting out to you yeah why did you not move exactly. you exactly i came to you as the mahout saying get out yes, of the way exactly. <laughs> but you you had such inner confidence that you know you had in mind a certain way an outcome that maybe the elephant will move away that was all in your mind i came to you as the mahout shouting to get out of the way but because your mind was so close you didn't realize that because we expect things in a certain way this is to break those shackles you see it also comes to me uh, as one thing gotham just to, to end this that uh, if one truly realizes in all humility that they do not know anything at all about anything and only baba knows the whole absolute big picture then how does the question arise of wanting or even if someone gave you the option of free will you would throw it away yes and actually to reach the state you have mentioned may sound very simple but very few have attained it and those few are living a life of peace because if nothing really matters which is the outcome of what you have just said you will be at peace so that is well said 
Mm, so thy will be done, Baba's will be done. Yes, exactly. Yes. Thank you, Gautam. Thank My you. My pleasure, Nick. As always, for your insights and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, and I do hope your audience is enjoying these podcasts as much as I am. Yes, they do. The feedback is very nice, and uh, as much as possible, we will take your time during this lockdown. Wonderful. So we are very grateful. Sure, sure. All right. Okay, thank you, take Gautam. care. Bye. You too. Bye.